<clears throat> so why do we need another Bible study plan? Well, because a lot of people stop doing them. So for instance, have you stopped a reading plan halfway through Isaiah or Jeremiah or Ezekiel? And did you get overwhelmed and confused and wonder why they even put all of these prophets in the Bible? Or do your eyes glaze over as you read through Paul's letters and you kind of wonder what he actually means half the time? What about when you start reading about all the kings of Judah and Israel and all the battles and the fighting and the history and you just can't keep it all straight? So you get frustrated and people give up. This video is 100% for you. I'm going to talk about some of the big reasons I think people don't finish their Bible reading plan and why I came up with a Bible reading plan to solve those specific issues. Then I'm going to speak to how I recommend reading the Bible and why and give you a link to a free download to help you track your reading in the order I recommend. Finally, I'm going to give you some tips on you can use no matter how you choose to read the Bible to get through the entire thing. So you can get my free reading plan, get some tips and tricks, and be whizzing along towards getting through the entire Bible. Some common issues... It's easy for Bible study to start taking too much time each day, or you get too far behind and give up because it seems daunting to catch back up and keep going. Or let's be honest, you hit a section of text that bores you to tears. It bums me out when I hear this because I think people just need a little change in how they approach their Bible reading, because it's just like anything else you want to be successful at. It takes practice and the right mindset. So issue number one is getting confused, bored, or having huge sections of the Bible that are hard for you to keep up your motivation through. Yeah, Jeremiah, Isaiah, Ezekiel come to mind. Numbers, Leviticus, even Deuteronomy can be rough. The obvious answer is to break up the sections of the Bible so that the so-called boring sections are sprinkled in with the interesting sections. It's like anything else. You have to eat your veggies to get to the dessert. All right, that's a bad analogy. I don't think you want to take bites of broccoli in between bites of ice cream. You certainly don't want broccoli ice cream, you weirdo. But you can break up the boring sections. And if you're a beginner, this can be overwhelming. So in my plan, I break down the books and sprinkle in the prophets in with the historic text. I sprinkle in the Psalms with the other books so you can read them along with everything else. And that deals with the boredom aspect a little bit. But what about the confusion aspect? How do you stop getting confused by some sections of the Bible? My answer is very simple, but depending on your personality, you're, you might hate it. But here goes. Don't fight it, all right? Just embrace the confusion at first. There are two ways I suggest dealing with confusion. One is to keep a notepad and jot down the section, verse, or details about a story that made you stop and, and question. And then take a note and then move on. If you have time later, Google it or ask somebody in your church that you're studying the Bible with. The other way is just to embrace the confusion. As you grow and read the Bible, there will constantly be new things popping out to you. So just keep moving on. And you might say, but Brad, I'm not built that way. I just have to know. So my response to that is, I don't care. What's your goal? To read the entire Bible or to understand the entire Bible the first time you go through it? The more times you read through and familiarize with, your, with the Bible, familiarize yourself with the Bible in its entirety, the more you'll understand. So my plan addresses this by giving you a specific sequence that will help you build your knowledge of the stories of the Bible and emphasizing learning the stories and getting more familiar with the Bible by reading it over studying it in depth every day. And if you do read it and build a habit, there's no rule saying you can't study sections of the Bible as you go through it. Especially for beginners, it's more important to become acquainted with the entire Bible. So that leads us right into point two, which is that we either get behind in our Bible study and it feels overwhelming to catch up or it starts taking too much time every day. And this is where prevention really helps. Just like I said a minute ago, don't get bogged down studying or understanding every story and verse. Just keep reading. You can take notes or not, but just keep reading. If your daily habit is taking up too much time and you feel like you can't devote enough time, then simplify. Readjust how much time you're reading and commit to it. If you get behind, you give yourself some grace and pick it back up. I mean, really, if you feel overwhelmed, you, you have a choice. You can change the amount of time you dedicate to reading and how much time it takes each day, or you can give up. I mean, that's a key thing I built into my plan. It's challenging, but it's very flexible. You can literally pick your pace, and if you drop off, you can pick it right back up where you left off. But the right mindset really is just to keep going. Embrace that you aren't going to understand it all. And even if you do understand it all, you probably won't be able to apply it all without time and practice anyway. So give yourself some grace. Pray for the discipline to continue and the wisdom to understand. And you guessed it, keep reading. If you fall off the wagon, pick yourself up, dust yourself off, and keep going. So you can see it would be helpful to have a Bible reading plan that's flexible, that's ordered to break up the boring parts, that kept you focused on Jesus and the stories in the Bible as you went. And that's exactly how to use my Bible plan. 
So I made the Bible plan that I did to be the best beginner Bible reading plan ever. And I start with the Gospel of John. I go through the Old Testament history books. I sprinkle in the Psalms and the prophets at various points to add some context and to reduce confusion. And also just to break up the monotony of various books of the Bible. And then we get to the Gospels and I sprinkle in some of the books of the law with the Gospel, aka the fulfillment of the law through Jesus Christ. So as you read the Gospels, you'll read sections of the law right next to it. Then we go through the rest of the New Testament to end with some prophetic text and wisdom literature. It's meant to give you sections to read through and mark off, so you can read as much or as little as you want each day. It's extremely flexible. It's not panic-inducing. However you read it, you can make the pace, you can set your own pace. If you're on fire, you can read a big section or an entire book in one day. It's really not as bad as it sounds. And if you're having a rough day, you can read a chapter or a shorter psalm. The thing really is just to keep reading until you get through the entire thing. And this is my first go at reading a, making a reading plan, so I'm hoping to make it better over time. But it's tough for even trained theologians to come up with this stuff, and that's not me. So I just pray that this plan helps someone other than me, and if it does, it'll be well worth it. So download the plan, highlight or check off the various sections as you go. Remember to focus on reading and the stories. Don't worry nearly so much about understanding everything. I like the enthusiasm, but just keep reading. Okay, got it? Okay, good. So I've got some general advice on how to get through the entire Bible anyway. Uh, I'm a little old school. I'm kind of a dinosaur. Some of that comes through in these tips, but especially the first one, because my first tip is to use a real Bible and get at least two bookmarks. So get a King James or New King James, ESV, NIV, New American Standard Bible. Personally, I think New King James and ESV are the easiest to read, but just get one and go. If you have a Bible, it's good enough. So then why do you need two bookmarks? Well, that's easy. One's to follow the Bible reading plan, and the second is to follow along in the Psalms and Proverbs. As you read along the plan, you use the first bookmark to keep track of where you are in the regular Bible, the section that you're reading. So when you'd start, you'd have a bookmark in the book of John and one in the book of Psalms to keep track of the last Psalm that you read. So each day I would encourage you to read a psalm or two along with whatever section you're reading. This helps you get through the psalms in a lower impact way without a huge slog through the entire book. If you use a reading app like YouVersion or the Crossway ESV app, it can easily track where you are in one section and you can bookmark whatever psalm you're on. But I think it's cool to use a real Bible for a couple reasons. One is less time on a screen, and two is that your kids will know exactly what you're doing if you have a Bible in your hands. If you're on a screen, you could be playing a game or scrolling social media for all they know. Some people might think it seems uh, showy to do that or fake, but I think that's garbage. It would only be showy if you were sitting there with a Bible and zoning out. Exhibit the behaviors you want your kids to have. Less time on screens? Check. More time with the Bible? Check. So my second tip is to pray before you read and just to keep it simple. You can say something like, Heavenly Father, please send the Holy Spirit to speak your word to me to help me understand what you have would have me learn today and that I'd strive to apply it in my life to glorify you to my family and the rest of the world. Amen. It's that simple. Ask God when you're diving in his word and if you feel so convicted, use it as an opportunity to confess sin and bring your anxiety and doubts to him. God can handle your feels and his word can help you overcome them. It's a powerful one-two combo. Tip number three is to read it, don't study it. Don't overthink it. Try to read it and understand the stories. Don't stop. If you get overwhelmed in your Bible reading, this will be really good news for you. You can just keep going. Not every passage is going to jump out to you every time, so you can just power through some sections. Isaiah really bogging you down? Power through. Romans seems repetitive and incomprehensible? Keep right on reading. Some days you're building a muscle, and some days you are really enjoying it and understanding what the Bible's speaking to you, but God will use it either way. So tip number four. Pick a couple people to read through the Bible with you, not to keep pace with each other, but to talk to each other about what you learn. Some people read faster than others, but the important thing is to apply what you're reading and talk about it with other people. Instead of throwing another stumbling block here where you're trying to keep pace with each other, just talk about what you read or some interesting thoughts that you had about the section. Ask each other where you're at in the Bible and keep motivating each other. Talk, with, talk about it with your, with your buddies. So tip number five is talk about it with your family. If you're reading the Bible every day, this is really, I would encourage you to just think about how you can bring that to your family. Encourage your family to read the Bible and give them an example of you doing it. Try to make it fun and interesting for your wife and kids. I really believe that nothing really brings families together like reading the Bible 
and discussing it. In fact, the Shema, the great commandment of the Old Testament, is about educating our children, raising them in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. And so as parents, we're called to ensure we're raising our children to know the one living and true God. So anyway, that's. I hope that helps. Download my free Bible plan. See if it helps you get through the Bible. The link is in the description. It is a Patreon, but it's free. You don't have to sign up or anything. And other than that, I'll catch you soon with more content about reading the Bible. And I will be praying for you and your families. All right? Peace.